You are the chosen one. I used to say like, help us Intel, you're our only hope back in the dark times of the GPU market. But you know what? You know, if you don't actually get the GPUs to us, it doesn't really help. Well, they're finally getting out there, at least some of the Arc A7, this is the higher end, but it, these are still mobile chips and this is still in China. But <laughs> hey, somebody's got them. And since somebody has them, it means we can get an idea of their performance. So let's start today's video diving into that a little bit. We're seeing some Time Spy results. And we're also seeing some Fire Strike results listed on a, so there's a, a laptop for sale. Again, these are available now in China or at least going to be soon. And in the marketing materials here, we see a, a slide that is confirming a result of about 10,000 in 3D Mark Time Spy that we're seeing on this other screenshot. And then this one's also giving a 3D Mark Fire Strike score of 23,090. Now, I originally found this from a video cards article, which I've grabbed over here, and they've got some comparison data. And so it looks like um, they're grabbing this from Notebook Checks GPU rankings, which are showing that uh, this Time Spy result is faster than GeForce RTX 3070 laptops, uh, which were scoring an average of 9,462 points. Uh, and that, that is even pushing up into the range of the 3070 Ti. Now that sounds really impressive. Well, remember this is a synthetic benchmark and it's really important to note that Intel has been called out on these synthetic benchmarks for actually cheating. They've had their uh, like some extra uh, acceleration optimization going on for that benchmark uh, that was considered not fair and not representative of real world performance. And it's unclear whether that feature has been turned off here. And we're gonna get to some actual gaming benchmarks here in just a second, which makes me uh, wonder if these are, are a bit inflated. Also, it looks like when they compared the Fire Strike results, those were more uh, between a 3060 and 3070, so a little less impressive there, but still reasonable performance, at least if we weren't about to be actually competing against the 4000 series here pretty soon. But what about the gaming performance? Well, we're getting uh, this leak here from Golden Pig Upgrade Pack, which gives us a bunch of screenshots and, and some of them uh, have, have a bit of Chinese going on here. So once again, I'm gonna rely on the video cards article, uh, which seems to have sorted out what some of that uh, Chinese and all that means, which games these are and all of that. So, uh, and again, links to everything I'm using today in the description as usual. So the first results look like Metro Exodus at both 1080p and here at 1440p. And then it also gives us the exact graphic settings uh, with, uh, it looks like we're using DX12, quality high texture filtering at AF16X, motion blur low, low tessellation full, advanced physics on, ray tracing off, DLSS off, hair works on, shading rate 100. So again, with ray tracing off here in these graphic settings, it looks like this is not the enhanced edition of Metro Exodus. Uh, that would be more ray tracing. Uh, enabled. But anyway, it's looking like at 1080p uh, in this uh, benchmark, they're averaging around 70 FPS. It looks like at 1440p, they're averaging about 55.39 FPS. They've got some other results here, uh, which once again, I think uh, Video Cards was able to figure out what game that actually is. It looks like F1 2020. And in this one, it's scoring 123 FPS average at 1080p and then 95 FPS at 1440p. But they're giving comparison data showing that the RTX 3050 is offering 120, uh, 120 FPS on average at the 1080p high presets in this game. Whereas we're seeing the A730M getting 123. So uh, that's RTX 3050 class performance, unlike the RTX 3070 class performance that we were seeing in the uh, synthetic benchmark, so uh-oh. And here we're seeing it looks like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And this is the 1080p, oh, my, my, my fat heads, it's, it's t t 1080p guys. Anyway, and then 1440p right there. Now, um, it doesn't look like we're given any uh, comparison point against that one. However, you know, that's, that's not super high frame rates or anything, so, now, they're actually also showing us the in Intel Arc control panel software while running Furmark. 
at a 2050 mega, uh, megahertz boost and at 92 watts. But again, this is running Fermark rather than a game as far as showing us that, uh, that information goes. Now, so here's the thing. With, with performance, at least in some games, at the RTX 3050 level, that brings up some big questions. However, one thing we're not seeing here that came up when the A3 laptop benchmarks were first coming out was that Intel's, what is it called? Is it their DL, is it DLL? It's the, um, it's the power management software. When it was turned on to conserve, uh, you know, the power usage and balance the power usage out on the A3 laptops, they were getting significantly worse gaming performance than when that was turned off. So we could have some hope that perhaps uh, that was turned on here and that if it's turned off, we'll see actually better gaming performance. So I, I will point out that, you know, that that could be something we could still hope for, but this isn't looking fantastic. Now, anyway, let me jump into some other news here. How about the uh, Radeon 660M integrated RDNA 2 GPU uh, was tested at Tech Epiphany, but then I'm grabbing this article here about it from video cards. Um, now this is the GPU uh, integrated on the Ryzen 6000H APU for laptops. And it looks like using FSR 2.0 at 1080p, uh, it looks like they had FSR 2.0 at the balanced setting. And then, you know, the, the settings here aren't, aren't, aren't uh, you know, turned up super high. This is Looks like mostly original settings with a few things, uh, with the um, filtering turned up to high. It looks like reflections completely disabled. That's a big deal. <laughs> Atmospheric set low, ambient occlusion disabled. So there's a lot of compromises to the graphics settings here, including, like I said, FSR 2.0 at the balance setting. But it looks like they were getting around 30 FPS. And this is a nice looking game, even at those settings. And then with an integrated APU on a laptop, uh, you know, that's that's reasonable performance there, so interesting to see. Now, how about the 4000 series we keep talking about? Well, the latest rumors are now regarding a power draw, which has been a huge question mark, uh, and we're seeing some information about the 4080. Now, this is coming from everybody's favorite, let's just call him Kimmy. Hey, Kimmy. Um, <laughs> or is it Kimmy? So I can't even get that part right. Whatever, Copite 7, Kimi, Kimi, Kapiti, Copite, whatever your name is, man. Following up on uh, his own tweet from a year ago, so this, uh, so, sorry, not a year, a week ago, five days ago. Oh, man, uh, I'm tired. It's the end of the school year. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Um, so following up here, the original one on June 1st, 2022, uh, was, in fact, we got some information about the TGP of the RTX 4090 uh, still being a mystery, and then says still has the opportunity to achieve 600 watts, possible RTX 4080 with a PG139 SKU 360 has the opportunity of a 450 watt TGP, and says if RTX 4070 uses GDDR6X instead, it has opportunity to reach 400 watts TGP. Now that's a lot of ifs and opportunities and whatnot. Uh, and now even this one is saying possible, but it's saying possible RTX 4080 PG139 SKU 360 has a 420 watt TGP and still uses AD103. So what is the possible referring to here? The way I would read this is we're saying that this SKU is still a possibility and maybe hasn't been set in stone, but that this SKU, if it does launch, has this is not the if the possible or an if, this one does have a 420 watt TGP, and it's saying still uses AD103. Now AD103 is a step down from AD102. AD102 would be what would we expect to be the top end GPU version that would be being used on like the RTX 4090 class of GPU. So that's what we're seeing there, a little bit of, uh, of an update, and again, uh, we could be seeing these GPUs in September, uh, you know, or sooner, depending on which leaks that you are uh, believing. <laughs> anyway, or later, you know. Now the RTX 4060 also uh, from from our favorite uh, Copite Seven Kimi Copite Copity Copity. I don't know, man. Anyway, uh, I don't care about the real release date. I'm just curious about the performance of RTX 4060, which consumes more power than RTX 3070. 
So that's a, uh, you know, if again, this source is to be believed, it's confirmation that the, uh, the 40, 60 power draw will be, you know, up quite a bit from the 30, 60 and even going past the 30, 70. Well, um, you know, that, that, that <laughs> I don't like seeing the power draws go up quite, quite this much. The 30, 70, uh, I believe has a, yeah, according to this article here, and is a 220 watt power draw. So 40, 60, uh, I, I hate to see the power creep going up even in these mid ranges if this turns out to be true. But hey, how about some new high end monitors? Um, so there's a press release from Samsung saying that they're launching a 240 hertz 4K gaming monitor and that this is using quantum mini LED technology. So, I mean, the specs on this thing sound quite good. They're also la uh, launching a Neo G8. This one uh, was, uh, sorry, this is the Neo G8. Um, but I was gonna say they were also launching a Neo G7. This is 4K with premium mini LED technology, uh, but this one goes to 165 Hertz refresh rate. Uh, still sounds quite good. And they're also launching an Odyssey G4. Um, and this one does not appear to be the mini LED technology. This is IPS uh, technology on this one, but interesting to see that. Now, speaking of connecting to a monitor, how about the HDMI spec? If you want to run a really longer cable, the spec is being updated to have an HDMI 2.1A. And I don't know if the A there is standing for amplified or, or electrified. Well, a, a wouldn't stand for electrified. The point is um, they're having a powered HDMI cord where it can be powered from its source. So you'd have to have a source that can deliver the power, but they're at least having a spec here that could allow active. A would stand for active. That's the word I was looking for. Anyway, <laughs> there we go. So active cables. Uh, so you could power them uh, to enable a longer run. So I don't think we're talking like power a device through the HDMI. We're talking power the cable to allow it to run further without losing the signal. Uh, Apple has continued its tradition of giving us meaningless graphs. So <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got the uh, M2 silicon with eight core CPU and 10 core GPU coming out. And they gave us some, uh, you know, relative performance graphs that, that uh, <laughs> as a math teacher, all I can do is shake my head. It's, it's some, some thing relative, it's relative performance. Uh, performance versus power? Pow performance versus power, okay, what kind of performance, we don't know. Um, okay, uh, anyway, it, it's something, guys, it, it's something. Uh, so power, CPU performance versus power, M1 versus M2. Okay, so we get that there is um, an 18% gap here at 15, per, 15 watts, I suppose. I don't know. Anyway, I just feel like Apple's graphs could be more helpful, but my channel focuses mostly on gaming stuff and not Apple, so let, let's just move on a little bit. Anyway, uh, it's looking like we're seeing from Benchlife here, which I've translated from uh, Google translated from Chinese, has a, uh, at least what they're saying is confirmed to be uh, Intel Arrow Lake S and Meteor Lake S um, uh, die information here. And it's, it's looking like the size of it is the same size as Alder Lake. So I wonder if then we could see some at least cooler compatibility here, maybe requiring a bit of an adapter because it does look like the height uh, could be a bit different than Alder Lake. Um, but yeah, anyway, there we go. This video uh, is, is all I got for you today because I got to go give finals last week of the school year. So anyway, I hope all you have an excellent day.